Welcome back. It is the first Tuesday of the month and that as always means that we get a new array of free assets on the Epic Marketplace store. To get these assets you need to go to the marketplace and the section free and free for the month and you'll have these five assets available for you to download. As long as you get them during this month they are yours to be used in any project moving forward in the future even after they have returned to normal selling prices. So what do we get this month? Well, first off, we have the modular old town. An environmental asset pack in the style of an old town city area in a Mediterranean township. It is a modular pack of 187 meshes and high quality textures. Low poly nature, lush and diverse environments. This is an environmental pack in highly stylized and low poly count consisting of over 800 3D models inspired by real world flora. Slavic Village. The Slavic Village asset pack is an environmental pack consisting of over 240 meshes, most of which have vertex paint options in the architecture of Russian and Eastern Europe. Turn-based strategy RPG template. This is the month's blueprint asset, which consists of an RPG turn-based strategy template where you can control and manage heroes, armies, then gather magical items to increase the power of your hero and armies to do turn-based battles in either square or hexagonal battle arenas. Customizable interaction plugin. This is the code plugin for the month, which is an interaction system allowing for multiple customization choices. The plugin consists of five C++ classes and 12 blueprints. The functionality is replicated as well. So let's take a look at these assets in more detail. And also in the end, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So stick around for that and give some feedback. So first out, we have the modular old town asset pack. And this part consists of, well, these assets that make up of this demonstration level. And you can see that it's mainly focused around the buildings that are uh, populating this specific area, but you do have some parts intersecting them as well with cobblestones and staircases and such as well. So uh, in general, this is what you get. There is not a whole lot when it comes to the interiors of these, as you can see. This one is pretty dark, so maybe you can't see. Uh, so it's more about the external visuals than anything else. But it gives the feel of the city part of a an area that is the original uh, wellspring of a town, which a town of more modern architecture has sort of built around and expanded upon. So th these are usually the, the charming areas of your, your city that you might want to visit for markets and such things. So very modular and that is this pack. Next up we have the low poly nature pack. So here you might be able to see although the uh, demonstration level is a little bit on the foggy side you have a very stylized and very low poly kind of look to this environment pack here. So you can see that the detail on the low level is actually quite high. You can see mushrooms and rocks and flora and such things as well as larger trees and so. Uh, the problem with a pack maybe like this is that it is highly stylized and very low poly. So it will probably fall in a little bit of a niche category for the use case. Uh, however, something that is a little bit interesting is that when you look at this level, you don't really get the feeling that there are a lot of assets in it. But when you open up the overview, you actually get a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of assets. Like I mentioned in the intro, it boasts that it has over 800 different 3D objects. Most of these will be of the small variety like the flora and mushrooms and rocks and such. You can see here we have 83 different mushrooms, uh, but it's also sporting a lot of different uh, other assets as well. So all in all, there's quite a lot of assets in here to be used. So if a low poly uh, pack is what you need for your project, then this can probably help you quite a lot. Next up, we have the Slavic village 
So this village here is set in an architecture style of a village in eastern parts of Europe or possibly in Russia. And here you can see that some of the housing that is available in this set. You also get some vehicles. There's one vehicle in two different colorations, I believe. Uh, you also have some decals and things like that, along with some smaller parts that you can decorate the level with. Um, the detail on these buildings are fairly high and you can also vertex paint many of the meshes in this project. And they also have some small Easter eggs like the Pac-Man uh, windows here. Uh, so yeah, if this is something you're looking for, this looks like a pretty high quality pack. Uh, I'm sure if you'll be able to use uh, the Pac-Man uh, adornments, but uh, hey, maybe that will suit your game or project just fine. Next up, we have the turn-based strategy RPG template. And normally I am not very fond of templates because templates tend to be bloated and have a lot of different systems and features. And if you are not in the need of all of these systems, they are generally difficult to turn off or exclude from your project. So that might require more work than the template itself is actually worth. I per personally think that smaller, well-designed systems that you can plug and play more easily into your projects or games is more beneficial. But that's my personal take. What you get in this specific project is you have this character, uh, you can move around and you have a few different things here. You have this character here, which is a quest giver. Going up to him allows you to get a quest, which you get in a quest notification tray over there. Uh, in addition to that, it has something that I'm not entirely fond of, which is that you get a self-promoting thing here about some other asset, uh, sporting that it's compatible with something else. If something is well designed, it shouldn't be needing to be compatible to something, in my opinion. It's, it's something that should be fairly plug and playable regardless. So that's a little bit of a negative in my opinion, but let's stay focused on the asset itself. Uh, in addition to that, you also have this sort of vendor here. You can go here and you can recruit parts of your army. And already here you might be seeing something that you might be recognizing if you're familiar with the game series called Heroes of Might and Magic. In Heroes of Might and Magic, um, you control this uh, hero in battle, you move around in a uh, map and you uh, recruit soldiers or beasts or monsters, depending on your faction, into your army uh, as the, the game progresses and you get a stronger and stronger army and then you fight enemy heroes and their armies and such. So that's exactly what this game is sort of impersonating because uh, we can go in here, we can recruit uh, more soldiers to our army, we can go in here and we can purchase items from the store, we can buy this leather armor for example, then we can go into our character by right clicking on it and we can see that we have a equipment screen very similar to Heroes of Might and Magic. And the, the base systems here are working as far as my knowledge and memory goes, pretty much exactly how the game goes. So clicking on an item, you can see it lights up the specific equipment part that you can actually equip it to, and your stats are improved in accordance to what the item had as a property. In addition to that, you can also go in and see what your active quests are, your current progress on it. So there's a quest system involved here as well. You can go to your spell book. Here you can see the spells that you have available for. Uh, we have tool tips for saying what they do and their mana costs and such things. We also have different filtration options here where we can go on different elements, just like here some magic uh, does when it comes to uh, keeping track of your spells. You have the different stats here. So these will be boosting and bolstering your enemy units in battle. So attack will make them do more damage. Defense will make take less damage. Power will increase your potency of your spells and knowledge will be allowing you to have more mana which allows you to throw more spells. So moving on from that we actually have uh, this area here which is a uh, battle arena where you can fight against enemies if you want to so these are optional you can go and click battle and you'll get into an arena with them. Over here we have an interactable in this case this is an interactable that will give us a bunch of items and experience 
and also a scroll claiming this. You can see that our hero will level up, so there's a level up system in place here as well. And as we level up, we get access to new spells as well. Going into our character, we can now see that we have a scroll. We can actually equip this, which allows us to have a temporary spell. So the slow spell is available. Sorry, not if we go on quest, but spells. You can see that we have a slow spell here. But if we remove this one, then we no longer have it here. So you both have permanent spells from progression and you have temporary spells based on items that you equip and such. Uh, in addition to that, we also had a character in the beginning which we took a quest from. This quest was to go and slay vampires. So we're a vampire slayer on a vampire slaying quest. And because we took that quest, we also have a aggressive enemy that spawned in here. If we didn't take the quest, this enemy wouldn't be here. This enemy will attack us automatically when we get near it. So this is the, the battle arena. So there are two different battle arenas that are available. You can have a square grid system or you can have a hexagonal grid system available. Um, if you were to not play against this character but rather go to the bosses, you could see the two different uh, versions of this if you wanted to. So there's both of these systems are available in, in uh, this template. So but starting here we get into a deployment phase where we can drag and drop our different uh, army components into different positions on the deployment zone. So the green are the, the valid options and when we are done we can just start the battle. The black parts here symbolizes uh, terrain that's impassable so we can't move to them now while we're in combat you can see that we have a system that keeps track of our different pathings depending on where we want to go you can also attack characters from different angles just like in heroes of might and magic um, you can right click on enemies to get their stats get some tool tips on them you can see what kind of abilities and buffs they might have temporarily you can see your own abilities here, so this character has a Berserk buff, so if I click on the Berserk buff, it loses its turn because it's using that turn for the Berserk. We can right click on it now and we can see that this has a status effect on of Berserk, which affects its stats in certain ways. So that is available as well. Uh, in this combat you also have a queue system, so you can see here which uh, order your characters will be taking their turn, hovering over them. You have some nice quality of life seeing uh, what their movement range is currently, so you can strategize around that depending on what how far your enemies can go, how far your allies can go and such. You get a divider between when the new turns come and so. You also have the option to delay your turn so it redistributes your your turn passage between different characters depending on a few different rules. That's very similar to Heroes of Might and Magic. In addition to that, I also mentioned that we had a hero character. Our hero character over here is represented by this white character over here. And we can interact with him, for example, by using our spellbook. You also have some other options here, which are not that interesting in my opinion for this specific part, but you can go in and show your hero stats. You can go in here and you can go to your spellbook. And from here you can activate a spell and then click on a target and then it will activate that spell. In addition to that, you also have your character. Now this one has its turn. We can do a long range attack on this character over here. And yeah, that is essentially what the template consists of. It is a template for a light version of Heroes of Might and Magic. If that is what you're looking to do, this might be a good base plate to work from. Uh, other than that, I'm not entirely sure how easy it is to configure for other means, but yeah, in in any case, there is a lot of different systems interacting with each other here. So it might be interesting to pick apart to learn different parts that might be uh, of interest for your specific projects. Lastly, we have the customizable interaction plugin. So this plugin is, as it says on the tin, meant for interaction. Uh, in this case, we have some simple controls here shown in the back. Uh, essentially, it's like this. You walk up to objects that are interactable. In this case, these are collectibles that you can pick up. Uh, we have the spheres and we also have the boxes on the right here. They're all the same, essentially. Um, 
Now it is going to be suggesting that when we press the E key we will be picking up the interactable that's closest to our mouse cursor in the middle there. Not, not the cursor that you see on the right here, but the, the point in the middle of the screen that I'm moving around. So if I press E at that point it will be picking up the closest one to that at each point. Uh, in addition to that you can also press a C key which turns it into a character proximity detector which means that whichever object is closest to the character regardless of where we're looking with the camera is going to be the object that we interact with. Uh, in addition to simple collectibles that we have here we also have a little bit of more of an advanced system which is a blueprint that's available in the project which shows uh, interacting with an object and it having a consequence. In this case we have a button which we can hold in our E key for and once we have held it in for long enough we have a door that slides out of the way as part of the interaction function. On this side we can then close it again. Uh, and over here we also have some examples of some spheres when we are actually, uh, it says pull but when we press E we're pushing those physical objects away in sort of an impulse manner. So this demo level demonstrates the basic functionality of how the interaction system is supposed to be used and then you can build classes uh, on top of that for the functionality that you're after. Um, as far as it, its advanced end goes, I'm not entirely sure. I've looked a little bit at the documentation. There are some delegates that you can check out and you have some customization options. Uh, but I guess you would have to play around with it a little bit to see if this fits what your needs are. Now, uh, before we end today, I would like to suggest something and I would like to have some feedback on this. Uh, I have some opinions consisting, uh, considering the, the assets that we get every month from Epic. Uh, it is of course very nice to have free assets given to us like this. Uh, and I am not unappreciative of that at all. However, I do feel that some of the assets that we get are not very useful. They're either too niche or we get too many of a certain type and things like that. And I would like to, without telling you what my personal specific op opinions about that are, uh, I would like to know uh, if you could tell me in the description below of this video what you would like to see. It could be uh, general types, maybe you wanted to have more environmental assets, maybe more blueprints, maybe more plugins, uh, maybe more characters, maybe more animations. Uh, maybe you could suggest uh, specific assets that you would like to see in the future. Uh, and then I would like to have a segment at the end of each video for the monthly assets. Uh, giving a suggestion to Epic in case, which they most likely are not, uh, watching this video or somehow get aware of the videos um, that they could maybe take as some sort of input and possibly have it slightly influence their choices in the future after what the community is looking for. So if that is of interest to you, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section uh, saying what you would like to see or maybe what you would not like to see. Any thoughts that you have on the matter at all. Anyway, that's going to be all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.